Well, thank you all for joining us for tonight's interactive webinar, Holiday Mixology 101. I'm Greg Berry, Assistant Director in the UAB Office of Alumni Affairs. Just a quick note, since we're virtual, don't be surprised if something may seem out of place or a technical issue pops up, or if you hear chatter in the background, I've got friends because we're participating in this interactive webinar to have the mixology with you guys. So I've got my wife and two friends, Duff and Rhonda, with us, and we're going to kind of give our favorite probably at the end, just so you know what we like. If you do experience video or audio problems, click the reconnect button at the top of your screen. This will get you back to the webinar right away. Tonight, we're gonna to be discovering how we can add extra cheer to our next holiday party, which is tonight at my house. At this time, I would like to introduce tonight's guest. Ryan Abrams is a mixologist and the beverage director at Paper Doll, I can't even say that, at Paper Doll Bar here in Birmingham. Sorry, Ryan. Ryan has been part of the service industry for the past 12 years and approaches cocktails with a fresh and tasteful eye while making their flavor paramount in everything he does behind the bar. So at this time, I'm gonna play along as we get interactive and officially welcome Ryan Abrams. Welcome. Hi everyone, Merry Christmas, how are y'all? Uh, good to see everybody, thank y'all for having me. Uh, we're happy to be here, uh, happy to go over some cocktails with everyone for the holidays, uh, whether you've got a cocktail party coming up for the holidays, whether it's a office party, uh, family function, whatever it may be. Uh, happy to be here and go over a few simple cocktails that you can do uh, right at home. So uh, we're going to start off with a couple very simple things. Um, uh, Greg and I had spoken a little bit about some cocktails. We kind of took a poll and a vote uh, within the alumni group of who wanted to see what. Uh, just kind of threw uh, a ton of uh, cocktail ideas at him and uh, the Alumni Association spoke about what they would like to see, what they would like to have, uh, and what they would like to work with. So uh, we're going to take those and we're going to walk through some cocktails with you. So uh, first on the agenda tonight, uh, we're going to do a holiday spiced old fashioned. Uh, typically an old fashioned is going to be either uh, whiskey based with a bourbon or rye on your preference. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit of bourbon, a little bit of rye, a little bit of whiskey, whichever you prefer, uh, some bitters, some sugar, and water for dilution. Uh, so we're going to start off with that. Uh, Greg sent out a little bit of a kind of a tutorial guide earlier about uh, that I had put together on some different things as far as what do you really need when it comes to making cocktails as far as equipment. Um, what do you need? Most of which is already going to be in your kitchen. Uh, you're going to see a lot of cocktail kits all over Amazon and they're really just all garbage. Uh, it's a bunch of pressed metal that's really stupid and doesn't really work that well. And it's going to fall apart in your dishwasher and it's all terrible. But anyway, so we'll, we'll go going with that. Uh, a lot of what you really need to make uh, good cocktails at home, uh, you already have. Uh, it just comes down to pretty much two things, quality and consistency. If you're using quality like quality ingredients and you're using them in a consistent pattern, you're going to have great cocktails. So what we've got here uh, to start off with a uh, holiday spice old fashioned. Uh, this is a mixing glass uh, that we use in the bar a lot. Uh, you might see them at home. Maybe you have one, maybe not. Uh, if you don't have one of these, feel free to use a pint glass. If you don't have a pint glass, feel free to use a simple mason jar. Uh, it's really about what vessel you have that's going to contain what you're working with. Don't have to go out and buy a $50 piece of glass just to make a good cocktail at home. So with that, we're going to start off with our mixing glass. We're going to bring it here closer to us. Uh, so what we're going to start off with is going to be our base spirit, which is going to be bourbon. So today we are using an Old Forester 86 proof bourbon. Uh, so they're flagship bourbon. So we're going to take that. And we're going to measure this out with what's called a jigger in the cocktail world. And this is, I don't know if you can see it or not, this is just a simple uh, plexiglass uh, measuring device, kind of like a measuring cup that you would see, but on a much smaller basis. Uh, I've also put notes uh, in that cocktail guide that came out as far as different uh, measurements. If you don't have a jigger at home, how to use different simple measuring cups and teaspoons, like things like that that you would have at home. Uh, to use that as, instead of using a jigger if you don't have one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our mixing glass. We're going to take two ounces of Old Forester bourbon. 
And this is, uh, especially if you're a beginner, uh, when it comes to cocktails, these are really easy to see through. You have gradient lines within this jigger so you can see what you're measuring. So we've got that two ounces. We're going to put it right in our glass. I'm just going to seal this guy up. Then we're going to move on to our spiced syrup. Uh, so we actually uh, make a little bit of this at the bar here. And it's typically just a spiced syrup. Uh, so what you would think with a brown sugar or simple syrup, we're adding a little bit of nutmeg. We're adding a little bit of uh, allspice. We're adding a little bit of clove, a little bit of cinnamon. So not spice in the thing that you would think with a jalapeno or a habanero where you're getting a lot of heat. Uh, not necessarily a Scoville heat, but more of an actual baking spice flavor. So we're going to take that. And instead of, you'll see a lot of cocktail, uh, especially some of the old cocktail recipes that call for a bar spoon. Uh, that's one of those things that's really kind of gone away in the past. And it's like there's, because you see so many tablespoons and teaspoons and even just, you know, simple cereal spins that are so different in size, uh, a lot of what the cocktail community has just kind of decided on uh, a simple teaspoon. So we're going to take just a simple teaspoon that you would have probably in your uh, cabinet uh, for measuring, uh, whether you're baking uh, a cake, pie, whatever. And so we're going to take our spice syrup and we're going to add one teaspoon to our bourbon. We're going to put that to the side and then we're going to take our bitters that we're going to use. Uh, so bitters are, uh, you're probably going to see in the grocery store. Uh, the most notable is Angostura white label with the yellow top. Uh, those are a type of aromatic bitters that you're, and those are the most common. Uh, I go into a little bit about it with the cocktail guide about uh, what makes aromatic bitters aromatic bitters, uh, but typically you're seeing a concentration of a lot of spices, whether it be Angostura bark, whether it be clove, uh, whether it be nutmeg, uh, a variety of different concentrations of flavors to get that bitterness that you want. So just right out of the bottle, we're going to use two dashes. So just up and down, two dashes. And then we're also going to use two dashes of orange bitters. Uh, I have also Got some orange bitters here and a dainty little bitters dasher bottle. Uh, and I go into a little bit of, about this as well. Uh, these are just kind of some attractive alternatives to have when you're bar cart. Uh, they're, you know, 10, 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, but with using these, you gotta you understand that they have a, what you call a dasher top. Uh, so the actual opening that this gonna dash from is gonna be smaller. So Whatever you're doing with these dasher tops, you're going to double. So if it calls for one dash, you're going to use two dashes of these. Our recipe calls for two dashes, so we're actually going to use four dashes. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. So we've got all of our ingredients here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add our ice. Uh, most notably, I'm adding our ice last, uh, and that's what you want to make sure you're doing with any cocktail. The reason why you want to add your ice to your mixing glass, or your shaker, whatever it may be, uh, is because you're adding ingredients and then the phone rings or that's the doorbell or the dog goes crazy. He's barking about something. You've got to go to the backyard or the pizza delivery guy shows up, whatever it may be. Um, you step away for a minute. The ice is already there. By the time you come back, it's already over diluted. So you want to avoid that at all costs. And the way you can avoid that is by adding your ice in last. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a couple pieces of good ice and we want to make sure that our ice is, doesn't have, you don't have to fill it all the way up, but you want to make sure that your ice is filled over uh, your ingredients and we want to stir it. Now uh, in the bars, you'll see a lot of people using these very fancy stirs, whether it be bar spoons, whether it be just stirring rods. Uh, you might not have that at home and that's fine, but I'm willing to bet that somewhere in some drawer, you have a pack of these, which are just simple chopsticks. Uh, just take a simple chopstick. You're going to stick it in the bottom of the glass. You're going to hold kind of like you would hold a pencil and you're just going to start stirring. And you're going to stir this for about 10 seconds or what you would call 30 revolutions. And the reason you want to stir it for only 30 revolutions is because this is also going to be served over ice. 
over a large rock in a cocktail glass. So we're just going to give that a little shake for a few seconds. Then we're going to take a simple Hawthorne strainer. Uh, if you don't have a Hawthorne strainer or a julep strainer at home, feel free to use a slotted spoon, use a cheese grater, whatever you can find. Just anything to keep that ice out of the glass. So we're going to take a rocks glass. I'm going to put that right there. We've also got a couple of pieces of large format cubes. Uh, these are, you know, cubes that are made from, you know, simple, you know, uh, polymer molds that you'll see on uh, Amazon. Uh, we're just going to drain that, strain that right into the glass right there. I'm going to put this off to the side. And for garnish, we're just going to take simple orange and a vegetable peeler. Uh, nothing too fancy, just something that you like, that you like to work with. Uh, we're going to take a nice, healthy swath from this. We're going to do it over the cocktail. We're going to be nice and slow about this because these things do bite. And if you get really quick about it, they will come back and they'll bite you in the fingernail. So I say this for personal experience. Be very careful. Take your time with it. Uh, and it will bite you, but if you're patient about it, you'll be fine. Uh, as you notice, I'm just expressing some of the oils uh, over the cocktail just by folding this swath of orange peel. And then I'm going to take the orange peel and I'm just going to kind of rub it around the rim so you get that orange oil flavor right over the top. And I'm just going to stick it inside there. And that is our holiday old fashioned. Uh, I have an actual helper uh, here with me. Uh, I'd like to introduce Kristen Green. She is uh, one of the owners of Paper Doll. Uh, she's also uh, a professional photographer, and we are actually here in her studio where she does a lot of uh, holiday shoots uh, with Santa Claus and his, his many elves. So, Kristen, what do you think? It's good. Good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, of course, absolutely. That's your, that's your, that's your bank, of course, absolutely. Uh, so there we go. That's our holiday old fashioned. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm a little bit away from the screen, so may not be able to see any kind of comments or questions you might have. But feel free to let me know. Uh, if you, you got, have, you got two positive votes. Okay. From the men in my house and you've got two negative votes for the women, but they're not bourbon Maybe girls at all. Oh. Okay, that's understandable. You know, I, I, I understand that. They're wrong. I understand that. Uh, but we, we've got we've got more. We've got more. Maybe I can sway the vote. Uh, maybe we maybe we can redeem ourselves here. Uh, so the next it, one, so you don't have to redeem. Absolutely. So the next one we're gonna go with is gonna be our uh, French 75. Uh, it's always a popular uh, drink in not only our bar, but bars across the world. Uh, it's a great mix of gin, lemon juice, simple syrup, uh, a little bit of champagne or Prosecco, uh, to whichever it may be. Uh, I am going to take a quick minute to go grab my chilled glasses and Prosecco from the freezer, and I'll be right back. Perfect. And as Ryan goes and runs that quick, just a reminder, you should have received, for those that signed up before today, a link with a ton of information that Ryan put together. So go ahead, go back. That is yours to, to take a look at over and over again. And there's also recipes for all of tonight, as well as several cocktail recipes that you may want to make. Um, what is really cool that Ryan did as well was he put batch recipes in this, which is fantastic. So we can make this for a larger group. Um, so I'm looking forward to testing these out later on as well. So Ryan, back to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, Greg, thank you so much for uh, bringing that up. Uh, I did put in some batch recipes uh, for you guys for if you're in the holiday spirit, you're having a holiday party at home. Uh, nobody wants to spend the whole time in the kitchen. I mean, you're already in the kitchen enough making the turkey, the ham, uh, the stuffing, whatever it may be. No one wants to spend more time constantly making cocktails for everybody. So Getting these ready ahead of time is great to so just go ahead and have in a, you know, just a simple leftover screw top wine bottle that you can fill everything with, uh, have it in the fridge, have it in the freezer, ready to go, uh, which is a great party hack to do. 
Um, so what we're going to do is a French 75. Uh, this is going to be a shaken cocktail. Uh, one thing you may or may not be able to see, uh, I've got our flute here that we're going to be serving this in. Uh, I actually just got this out of the freezer. Uh, one of the great things about doing, uh, especially a very cold cocktail, uh, is having everything in the freezer. Uh, that way you have everything cold, especially cold glass is great for a cold cocktail. I think we've all been to, uh, a bar and had a draft beer or a draft cider uh, that was sor served in a, a warm glass. And as it's poured into the glass, the beer warms up. It's pretty miserable by the time you get to the bottom. Same with cocktails. Uh, just taking a few minutes, throwing that glass in the freezer makes all the difference. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, with the French 75 is we're going to do a little bit of a different recipe than what you might see from the classic recipes. Uh, some of the classic recipes, like the Harry Craddock recipes, are great, uh, but they're super boozy uh, and aren't always as delicious as they would be if you pared down your cocktails a little more sparingly for flavor. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, is we've got a shaker tin here. This is just a very simple 18 10 on 10, 18, 20 ounce uh, sugar tin. If you don't have this, again, you know, feel free to use a mason jar, uh, but we're gonna just use the shaker tin for now. Uh, so we've got our large section that we're gonna set over here to the side. We've got our small section that we're gonna work in for portioning everything. So what we're gonna do, since this is a gin-based cocktail, we're gonna start off with a London dry gin, uh, which is classic for uh, these 75s. Uh, we're gonna start with one ounce and this is, again, this is one that's pared down to make it a little bit more palpable, a little bit easier drinking. So we're just gonna do one ounce of a London dry gin that we're gonna pour into our tin here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of simple syrup. Uh, and this is, you know, kind of one I went over with the cocktail guide. Uh, it's just a very, um, this is just a simple one-to-one -one ratio. Meaning that this is, uh, and this one is actually done for the home, home mixologist. This is done by proportion. Uh, so it's uh, one portion volume to one portion volume uh, of sugar to water. So we're going to take just a half ounce uh, of this simple syrup. We're going to squeeze it right in there in our jigger and then right into our tin. Then what we're going to do uh, is we're going to take some fresh lemon juice. Uh, I touch on this a little bit within the cocktail guide, uh, and it's it's one that you may be tempted to see, uh, you know, bottled lemon juice in the store. That that's all fine and well, uh, but a lot of times you see a lot of preservatives in there that are that are kind of cut with. Uh, they just kind of throw off the flavor uh, that you don't really absolutely need to have in there, uh, and it's not that much harder to just cut open a lemon and juice it. Uh, then you and that's it. granulated sugar for the simple syrup, correct? That is true. Just kind of simple baking sugar. Uh, doesn't need to be any kind of like uh, confectioner sugar or anything like that. Just very simple baking sugar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're going to take our uh, fresh lemon here on our cutting board. And then we're going to grab of course my knife's over there. Uh, we're just going to take a uh, simple paring knife we're just going to cut it in half on the axis. And we're going to take a simple citrus juicer. Uh, you can find these on Amazon for a few bucks. Uh, not much to them, uh, just a simple piece of hard metal just that are going to press all the juices out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take half of our lemon. Then we're going to take our jigger just so that we can measure out what we have and what we're working with. And we're going to press this lemon juice out of the lemon and so we can get to a half ounce right there okay. so we've got our lemon juice there we're going to pour our lemon juice into our shaker tin and our first part is done so what we're going to do is we're going to take our shaker tin here we're going to load it up with some ice Grab our ice here and don't feel like you have to use the whole freezer for it. You just want to make sure you have enough ice to cover the ingredients when you're shaking. So we're going to cover up the ice over our ingredients. 
Then we're going to take our shaker tin over the top and we're going to flip it on the other axis and we're going to give it a nice little thump there. Don't feel like you have to just pile drive this in there, but you want a nice, nice thump, basically to the point where you can lift it up from the top and the bottom will not release. This makes sure there's a nice vacuum there, there's a nice pressure. So we're going to flip it over and then we're just going to give it a little shake for a few seconds. And we don't want to shake the hell out of it. We just want to make sure it's nice and cold. We want to be absolutely able to feel uh, the temperature through the shaker tin or the mason glass uh, to make sure that we can actually feel the cocktail getting cold and getting diluted. So then we're going to take our flute glass right here. Again, we're going to take our Hawthorne strainer, place it over the top. And then we're actually going to use a fine mesh strainer. Uh, this is something you see in a lot of cocktail bars uh, to strain out any of, you know, sediment, whether it be, you know, a cocktail pit, uh, whether it be uh, some citrus pits, whether it be some fresh herbs that might be used, and ultimately to remove any kind of ice shards that you might see. So we're just going to strain this through, make sure we've got a nice bit of that flowing all the way through. Make sure we get all that put through. Then we're going to take a little bit of sparkling that we have here. And we are going to top this with some sparkling wine, maybe Prosecco, Cava, uh, Champagne, whatever you prefer, whatever you like. Um, this is a great cocktail to experiment with, to find out what you like as far as the juxtaposition between uh, the sharpness of the lemon juice and the gin, as well as the sweetness of the simple syrup. Uh, another fun thing to do is instead of using simple syrup is to use limoncello. If you have some around the house, just fortifies that lemon flavor and adds a little bit of extra sweetness from it. So we've got uh, our sparkling wine added into our cocktail. Then we're gonna take another lemon back with our peeler and we're going to just slowly peel a little bit of lemon peel off of that while also being careful, not going too quickly. Uh, again, these things bite, uh, so do be careful. And we're just gonna express a little bit of that lemon right over the top. So that lemon is the first thing you feel and sense on your palate. We'll just give that a little twist and we'll just put that right on the side, a little curl, and there we go, French 75. Uh, Kristen, would you mind uh, judging my work? Sure. <laughs> I know, it's, it's so, so hard. So terrible. That one is good as well. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to disagree. No, I, okay. It's not red, guys, I promise. Uh, so there is our French 75. That one's yummy. They're a fan of this one. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, the French 75 is not the worst thing to have. Oh, it's nice and bright, it's nice and bubbly. You get a little citrus, you get uh, a little bit of the gin flavor coming through. So with that, we are going to keep moving along. Uh, we're going to go to a hot buttered rum, uh, which is kind of a northern thing, but it's a fun, uh, I say it's a northern thing. It used to be a national thing, uh, but it's kind of uh, gone a little bit of the wayside, less for the holidays, uh, but it's a really fun cocktail. It's great. Uh, it's very filling. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of like a meal in a glass uh, to a certain standpoint. So we're going to do a couple things first. Uh, this is one that we're going to need a little bit of preparation for. Uh, so we have here, uh, this is a what you call a Georgian glass. Uh, this is one that we use in the bar. Uh, this is what we use for not only chilled cocktails, but we also use it for hot cocktails like an Irish coffee, uh, a hot buttered rum. Uh, we use it for a hot toddy. And the reason we make these in these glasses is you have a nice stem to hold on to, the glasses get you warm, your hands burn you. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, before we do anything is we're going to just set that right there 
And what I have here is just a simple thermos of hot water. Uh, since we're doing this offsite, um, we've got a couple of things prepared. But if you're at home, uh, if you've got an electric kettle, load a little bit of water in the electric kettle, uh, let it go for a minute or two or it boils up. Take a little bit of hot water. And then we're just going to pour that into the glass and get that nice and warm for us. The reason behind this being that the same way that you want a cold cocktail in a cold glass, if you're going to have a hot cocktail, you want a hot cocktail in a hot glass because you don't want to lose that heat as soon as it arrives to you or as soon as it hits your lips. Now, you don't want to be burning it out. Uh, you don't, certainly don't want to burn your tongue or your lips, but you want to have a nice warm glass. So we're just going to give that a few seconds to kind of warm up. And it's also going to help us with what we're doing for our concoction. So we're just going to take a little bit of that hot water. We're going to just going to dump that off to the side. So now we've got a nicely warm glass. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, a little bit of unsalted butter. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Of course, I'm using simple Lando Lakes unsalted butter. Uh, and I've just kind of set it out to the fridge for a second just to kind of soften up. And we're just going to give that, we're going to sit that right in the bottom there. Give that a second to just kind of sit there. Then we're going to take half an ounce of a dark brown simple syrup, just so it's got a nice little bit of sweetness, but also you've got a little bit of that dark brown sugar that's going to have a nice bit of character to it. So we're going to pour that right over our butter there. Then we're going to take some Jamaican rum. Uh, it doesn't have to be Jamaican rum. Uh, I do recommend a dark rum. Uh, today we're going to be using Appleson Estate Signature Rum. Uh, it doesn't have to be a Jamaican rum. Uh, it's just a flavor that we like a lot. Uh, being a Jamaican rum, it's got a lot of, and being in the pot still fashion, it's got a lot of really earthy, funky undertones. Uh, so it's one that we like a lot. It's got a lot of characteristic to it. So we're going to take an ounce and a half of our Appleton Estate right over the glass, right in there with the rest of our butter and sugar mixture. And this is one that's kind of fun to play with, uh, with it being a hot cocktail. Feel free to add some Angostura bitters. Feel free to add some allspice strand, whatever you like. So uh, it's kind of one that's fun to play with. So we're just going to kind of incorporate that a little bit. Then let's go back to our hot water. We're just gonna fill that glass with some hot water. And this way, our rum and our butter and our sugars are gonna mix together. It makes for a great holiday sweater, if you wanna call it that, especially when it's nice and cold. Uh, it makes for a nice liquid sweater. So we're just gonna give that a nice toss. We're gonna to make sure that butter dissolves into that hot water, that hot rum, and the sugar as well. It's gonna give a nice silky texture to it. So we're just gonna let that follow through. So somebody asks, can you use bourbon instead of rum? Absolutely. Um, feel free. Uh, this is one of the, especially with hot cocktails, with uh, Irish coffees, with, um, hot toddies with hot buttered rum. Feel free to use bourbon's great, uh, a rye whiskey's great, a Canadian whiskey's great. Um, if you like an apple brandy, that's great. Um, it, like One of the cool things, if you use a flavored butter, uh, whether it be apple butter, uh, whether it be pear butter, one of those, it just, there's a lot of, there's a big spectrum as far as flavor that you can go with doing a hot buttered rum uh, that makes it for a great cocktail. Uh, so feel free to experiment uh, and do whatever uh, kind of comes fancy to you. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a lemon peel, same way. We're just going to take our time, just peel that lemon off. And we're just going to express a little bit over there. Same way, we're going to just kind of give that a little squirrel, give us a little bit of lemon flavor over there. And I'm going to have my helper come taste and judge my work. All right, what do you think? It wants to be perfect. Uh, you like it? Yeah. Good. It's good. What do you like about it? It's creamy. 
Mm-hmm. That's the that's the it's fact. That the nice warm. Mm-hmm. It's great. Like a cold night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. That is so creamy yeah. and so smooth. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The, mm-hmm. the the fat from the butter really kind of rounds out a lot of the sharpness of the rum, uh, wow. and really it's just. Uh, it's great uh, all around, and it's one of those things you can play with. Uh, it's kind of an open spectrum uh, as far as what you're dealing with. Like we talked about earlier, uh, do it with bourbon, do it with rum, do it with rye, uh, do it with scotch, do it with um, any kind of apple brandy. If you like Applejack or like a straight bonded uh, apple brandy, there's a lot of ways you can go for it. Uh, it's great with grapefruit. It's great with orange. It's great with lemon. Uh, it's great with flavored butters. There are a lot of different ways you can go with that. And it's one that, especially in the cold months, uh, I say that as now in Birmingham, it's right. 70 degrees tomorrow. Uh, but you can really take that and run with it and see what you like. And you can make your own hot buttered, whatever, hot buttered bourbon, hot buttered rum, hot buttered rye, hot buttered brandy, whatever it may be. That's good. Yeah. Right. Let's move along here. Uh, so kind of keeping in with the hot cocktail, uh, let's move on to a uh, hot toddy, uh, as you will find throughout the holidays, especially through the cold months. Uh, going to be very similar, but a little different. Um, we are going to be starting with a glass that we want to warm up. So we'll take a little bit of hot water here. And we are going to warm up our glass just to make sure it's the temperature. Make sure it's nice and warm. Bring it up to the temperature. It doesn't have to be too long, just a few seconds, just to kind of shock that glass from going from, you know, 72 degrees in your home to being a little bit warmer, uh, being a little bit easier to work with. Just kind of don't want it to be too hot. You don't definitely don't want it to burn yourself as you're working with it. Um, but we've got our hot glass here. So then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna switch spirits over to a scotch. Uh, today we're gonna be using a famous grouse uh, blended scotch. And this is one of those, you're, you're welcome to use a single malt scotch, but this is one of the kind of cocktails where you know blended scotches really kind of come through just because they have a little bite to them. Uh, and using them in a cocktail, especially in a hot cocktail like this, they really kind of bring out some of their characteristics. So we're going to go with an ounce and a half of our scotch. And again, the same way, feel free to use bourbon, feel free to use rye, feel free to use rum, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, taste a couple things, experiment a little bit, see what you like. Uh, for a sweetener, we're also going to be using a honey syrup. Uh, now, feel free to use other syrups. Uh, scotch and honey just go together like a slap on a fool. So it's one of those that like just makes sense. Uh, but again, feel free to use a ginger syrup. Ginger syrup is great for this. Uh, using a dark brown simple syrup is great for this. Even using our holiday spice syrup is great for that. But we're just going to do a little bit of a honey syrup for about a half an ounce. And we're also gonna go back to a little bit of lemon juice. So we're going to take some lemon juice in our juicer. And we're gonna put our cards on the side here so we can see. We just wanna measure out about a half ounce of lemon juice. That way we can get a nice bit of citrus to it. But also, we're not going to overpower it with too much citrus. We're going to pour that right in there. A nice citrus flavor. Then, we're just going to take two dashes of Angostura bitter just to kind of revert back to those flavors of Angostura bark and clove and allspice. Uh, We're just going to do two dashes of that. And then we're going to go back to our hot water. And we are going to fill this all the way up. And this will actually not only add dilution and temperature, but this is a cocktail, with most hot cocktails, you don't have to shake because most of the hot water is going to be driving the ingredients around the glass. So it's one of those you could shake it, but it 
it's a lot of work for not a lot of progress. Uh, so we've got our finished cocktail here. And again, just bringing out those honey and uh, clove notes and a little bit of lemon. We're going to add a little bit of lemon as well. Uh, I like a little bit of grapefruit in mine. Uh, I think it's just a little bit different, something you might not expect all the time, just from some of that bitterness and some of those citrus oils. We're just going to express that right over. We're going to fold a little bit into just a sphere there. We're going to rub the rim, just get some of those oils right around and tuck it to the side. Uh, Christian, what do you think? Yep. And that's, so it's scotch, honey syrup. I'm not really a scotch person. Yeah. 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 It, it's a little different. It's good too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christian Cruz. Uh, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a great scotch cocktail. It's definitely a great introduction to scotch. Uh, if you're not so familiar with it, uh, if you just haven't developed a taste for it, especially uh, dealing with some I hate to say lower end scotches, but some blended scotches like Cuddy Sark, Famous Grouse, Naked Grouse, uh, even Dewar's. Uh, it's a great starter. Did you put the grapefruit in this one? So that's just lemon, uh, just but it, grapefruit's just a personal recommendation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So going on with that, uh, we've got two more cocktails. Uh, Greg, how are we doing on time? Am I, am I moving too slow, moving too fast? You are doing fantastic. Okay, great to hear. Uh, so what we're going to do next is seems to be this mystical crowd favorite uh, known as the espresso martini. Uh, so we're going to go with that. Uh, I'm going to grab a quick glass from the freezer and I'll be right back. Once again, thank you so much for to Ryan for putting everything together for us tonight and for all of the good comments that uh, people are keeping up with. Saw a couple of questions in there. Bill, yes, you can melt the butler to a point, butter to a point beforehand. Softened is probably best based off of what I'm picking up. Um, and I believe James asked if you can do some batches. You can do batches on some of these. Some of these, it's probably not, especially like the, the hot butter rum where the butter might congeal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can absolutely do a uh, hot buttered rum into uh, a batch cocktail. Uh, keep in mind that when you're doing uh, using butter in, in a, a hot batch cocktail, uh, it, the butter will coagulate. Uh, the best way to do it is actually to, if you're going to put everything together, uh, put everything together uh, without, uh, you know, without keeping it super hot. Shake everything together, let it kind of sit in the freezer or, or in the fridge rather overnight. Let it kind of coagulate, let some of those fats kind of seep into the other ingredients. Uh, and if you're having a holiday party and if you want that available, uh, the best thing to do is about an hour or so before everybody arrives, uh, either take uh, a sous vide if you have one uh, in a hot water bath, or you can do a crock pot. Just uh, let it warm up for about 15 minutes, shake everything up. Put it back in the hot water. Just make sure that everything's evenly distributed through that. So, uh, moving on, we're going to do an espresso martini. It's a, it's a favorite at our bar. It's a favorite at every bar across the world now. Uh, it was kind of one of those late 80s, early 90s kind of uh, fashionable cocktails that uh, there's some there's some, a little bit of folklore that came behind it. Apparently, it was kind of invented by Kate Moss, uh, who's a supermodel, a little bit at the time. Uh, there are some varying ideas about that. But it, it, it kind of came in that situation and in that time period in the 90s and early 2000s where everything was a martini. If it was served in a martini glass, it was a martini. If it was a watermelon martini or a sour apple martini or it was... Um, a pear martini or, you know, uh, a pineapple martini, all these different things that kind of came through uh, the late 90s, early 2000s about, okay, it's in a martini glass, it's clearly a martini. Uh, and this is one that was created by Dick Bradsell, who's 
famous London bartender that kind of came up with it. And it's, it's shared different names from the vodka espresso to the espresso martini back to uh, the espresso cocktail. And then finally, it's been settled on that this is the espresso martini. Uh, so with that, uh, I've got a cold glass that I just got out of the freezer. Uh, it's losing a little bit of a chill, but still a nice cold cocktail. Uh, we're going to take our cocktail shaker. And we're going to start off with an ounce and a half of vodka. Uh, today we are using Tito's. Uh, always a crowd favorite. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of Tito's right into our shaker tin. Then we're going to take half an ounce of a maple syrup. Now this is kind of something that we do at the bar uh, that's a little different than other places. Some places use a dark brown simple syrup. Some places you just use uh, regular simple syrup. Some places use a rich simple syrup. This is when we were kind of testing out our espresso martini. We're like, let's, okay, this is good, but it's not like the best. So how do we like, how do we figure out what it needs? And we eventually settled on using maple syrup, just right out of the bottle, maple syrup. Uh, we don't dilute it. We don't cut it with any kind of water uh, for flavor or even uh, just for viscosity. Uh, so we just use a simple bit of maple syrup. We're just gonna use a half ounce of it, of our maple syrup right into our shaker tin. We're also gonna use half an ounce of a coffee liqueur. Um, this is one that we like to use at the bar a lot. Uh, it's a rum company known as the Kraken. Uh, they started off with like a black uh, spice rum a couple years ago. It's fine, uh, but you know, it's not the best. Uh, and then they came out with this a couple, about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, it's their black roast. It's a like coffee infused uh, dark rum that they were doing. And it, we, we had been using an actual espresso uh, coffee liqueur from Italy. Uh, and we tasted back and forth. We we're like, oh, this is so much better. So we're going to be using the Kraken Black Roast. If you can't get this, feel free to use Kahlua, feel free to use Borghetti, uh, any kind of coffee liqueur that you like uh, to your palate. Uh, it's your cocktail. You should like what you're drinking. Uh, don't drink it just because everybody else is drinking it. Uh, so we're going to use another half ounce of our Kraken Black Roast right there. And then uh, a lot of these recipes call for fresh espresso. If you have an espresso machine at home, that's great. That's awesome. Totally use that. Uh, if you don't, uh, that's okay too. So what we do in the bar is we've taste tested between espressos back and forth and different grinds, different beans. Uh, and we eventually settled on actually making our own cold brew coffee concentrate because we were able to control a little bit more of the flavor uh, that went into it between the amount of water that into it, the amount of heat, the amount of coffee, uh, the grind. We actually grind our own beans to make this cold brew concentrate. So we use some of this. Uh, there are several brands that have Starbucks makes a cold brew concentrate. Uh, I know New Orleans Coffee makes a cold brew concentrate. Uh, I think even Publix does a cold brew concentrate. Uh, that we've used before uh, that have had pretty good results. Uh, but we just, we, we, we like to work hard and we're just, we work too hard as it is. So we just like to make our own. Uh, so we're going to go with half an ounce of our cold brew concentrate right there. I'm going to put that to the side. And then uh, a, lot of people, a lot of recipes call for cream, vanilla, all that. You really don't need it. It's, it's, it kind of just messes everything up. Uh, yeah, you know, drink, drink what you like, but I mean, it just in, in our experiences, um, you don't have to eat. So we're going to take this and we are going to seal our cocktail again. Make sure we got a nice seal in the bottom up before we shake it. That way it doesn't end up all over your kitchen and your bar cart. Okay. Open our tin here, just give it a little time. We got a little pressure in there. So we're gonna put this to the side. Again, with our Hawthorne strainer. And 
our fine strainer. We're just going to slowly pour that through. Nice head on that. And then to garnish, we're just going to take a couple of just very simple unground coffee beans. And we're just going to throw that right over the top. And my tasting elf will <laughs> let me know how we did. Everyone buys this. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm not a coffee drinker, and I like that. That's good. It's uh, yeah, it, it kind of rounds the barriers of you have the bitterness of the coffee, but also you have some of the sweetness of the maple. Uh, if you didn't know, you wouldn't be able to tell there's vodka in it. Um, yeah. And so it's um, which can be a problem. <laughs> uh, it's there is such a thing as too many espresso martinis. Chocolate. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely get a lot of you definitely get a lot of chocolate. Uh, you definitely get a lot of like kind of that deep roast flavor uh, out of using the cold brew coffee and using the coffee liqueur. Yeah, you I'm, I'm, you can check it. I'll, I won't. Yeah. Judge I won't check it. You can check it. I, no, I'm not. I could. <laughs> uh, so going on that, it's a crowd favorite. It's great, uh, and that's a great one to have batched. Um, just go ahead and uh, kind of have all the ingredients ready and. You know, have it in a bottle. And even if that's your drink of choice, it's great to just kind of have in the refrigerator. You come home after a long day, but you know what? I've had it. I'm going to have an espresso martini. And that's, and I'm just going to kick the shoes off, undo my bra. I'm just going to, you know, get Netflix on. I'm just going to go ahead and just, that that's my night. So it's a great one to have in the back pocket. Thomas uh, says it's a home run. That one's for breakfast. Well, good. That's, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Why not? You know, they have an Italian breakfast. Uh, yeah, uh, go for it. I wouldn't recommend more than three, but yeah, absolutely. For breakfast, yeah, no brainer. Uh, so we are going to do one more uh, for you guys before I bore you to death. Uh, we are going to do an Irish coffee. Uh, it's one that we started doing at the bar uh, when we opened back in December of 2018. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been that long. Uh, so it was one that we did. Uh, it was one that we had kind of been playing around with. And there were really like no, there was nowhere you could get a hot cocktail in Birmingham. There's nowhere that you could actually get an Irish coffee. So we said, you know, what the hell? Let, let, let's do an Irish coffee on our on our menu and let's see how it goes. And even now, it's uh, it's one of our better sellers. Um, just because we don't, it's very simple, it's very easy, it's not complicated, it's easy to make. So we're going to start with, uh, again, going back to a hot cocktail format. So we've got our hot cocktail glass. We're going to take some hot water. And we're going to fill up our cocktail glass, get it nice and warm to temperature. And that's going to sit there for a second, getting nice and warm. And the second part, and this is pretty important. I mean, it's it's not that important. It's just drinks. Like, it, it's fine. But anyway, uh, for, for a time standpoint, uh, this is really cool. Uh, so what we're going to do is we do a uh, whipped foam over the top of it. And we don't do uh, like you would think with... Um, a whipped cream from a CO2 canister or even from a nitro canister. What we do is we take a uh, heavy cream and we actually expand it. Uh, so that way it can float on top of the cocktail. So you'll take a, a mason jar. It's a very simple mason jar. We're going to take some heavy cream uh, that you would get from, you know, the dairy section. We're going to just pour a little bit in there. And when I say a little bit, maybe, you know, a few, three ounces, you know, not too much because it will expand. We're going to take our lid and we're going to make sure this is nice and tight because this is not something you want to have all over your kitchen the next day. So we're going to take this and we're going to shake it like we're going to shake a cocktail. And all the while our glass is still warming and we've got our heavy cream expanding. We're introducing air into the cream, so it's going to get lighter. It's going to get a little bit silkier. 
It's not going to be as much fat content on the cream. It's going to be a lot easier to work with. So we should give that a nice shake. Then we're going to dump our water here. We're going to take half an ounce of our dark brown simple syrup. Pour that right into the glass. We're going to take some Irish whiskey. Today we're going to be using Jameson. We're going to use, and you don't have to use Jameson. Feel free to use Chilmore Dew. Feel free to use Patties, uh, Sexton, whatever you prefer. We're going to pour that in there as well. And then... Because we're doing things offside, we also have a canister of coffee ready to go. And the same with other hot cocktails, as you're pouring the hot coffee into the cocktail, it's gonna mix everything together and evenly distribute it. So you don't have to worry about all the shaking. It's gonna do the blending and gonna do the dilution on its own. And so we're gonna give us another little shake just to make sure we get it nice and aerated. And so now we're going to take our, overdid it guys, uh, <laughs> aerated it a little bit too much. So give me about 10 seconds and we'll be there. Uh, good. That's allowing me to get the coffee actually ready. So you're good. <laughs> <laughs> And so now that I've redeemed myself, we're going to take this whipped coffee and we're going to pour it right over the top. And it's going to build a nice foam right over that. So we're going to have this whipped coffee. We have this light, nice and light cream. And as we're doing that, we're going to take a little bit of a micro grater. Uh, this is something you can probably get at Home Goods or off Amazon or wherever you're, you know, any kind of home fixture store. And we're going to take a little bit of a nutmeg pot and we're just going to give a little dusting over that. Just make sure we get that cream nice and coated, get a little bit of that nutmeg flavor right there. This is, uh, this is another great one to do for batch. Uh, you can have your heavy cream in the fridge, kind of waiting. Uh, you can have a hot pot of coffee on, and you can have everything else ready to go. Uh, my elf is going to fulfill her contractual yes. duties. Did you say it loud enough? Yeah, it was pretty loud enough. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it's okay to have a, a milk mustache. If you, if you don't have a milk mustache, you're not doing it right. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> yes, it's okay. You're supposed to have a milk mustache with that. So. Yeah. Again, that's one of those. It's easy to make, you know, hot cup of coffee, some simple syrup, some whiskey, a little bit of whipped cream, uh, and a little bit of nutmeg, and you're, you're right there. So... Uh, great. Does anybody have any questions I can answer? Anything anybody wants to know about? Yeah. yeah, if anybody has questions, drop them in the chat. We have a few more minutes with Ryan. Um, I was trying to gather votes on our end to see which ones were the favorite. Um, the the uh, hot buttered rum was definitely up there. Okay. So right. was the 75, the French 75. Okay. And right. even with the the non coffee drinkers, which is half of our audience here, <laughs> the martini, the espresso martini, was right at the top. So this is just fantastic. You know, all of them were were good. You know, they stand alone, but we're obviously putting them head to head. Gary Smith says espresso martini. He loved that one. So if anybody else has anything they want to drop in, French seventy five and the coffee martini are the faves. Um, remind Adrian how you made the spiced syrup. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and forgive me, I don't have the exact recipe on me right now, but it, uh, it is a, com it's a dark brown simple syrup that is also, I believe, 
and don't don't hold don't hold my feet to the fire on the measurements, but uh, I want to say a teaspoon of uh, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of allspice, um, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, three cloves, and. Uh, missing something. You, uh, you know what? That's fine. We will make sure we email all the information out so they have it. Um, it's on that document that you sent me um, the other day. So with the, the hot butter rum, um, how much butter do you use? Is it just the one teaspoon? Uh, so I just use, um, I use about a half a tablespoon. Uh, okay. And that's, again, like these are, these are guidelines, but at the end of the day, it's what you like. Uh, if, sure. you, if you want to do... A tablespoon and you like that that's fine there 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 are no cocktail police that are going to come arrest you for making your hot butter <laughs> rum the wrong way um you know and that's that's the great thing about uh the cocktail spectrum and you know some of the classic cocktails are great uh but they they give you some room to grow and room to find out what you like and what you don't like and uh just because you know you go to some snooty cocktail bar, they're like, oh, this is the way you should have it. I'm like, well, you know, I, I don't like it. So that, I don't know. Um, so, uh, you yeah, know, this is what's great, you know, experiment a little bit at home, what you like, what you don't like. Um, there are, even even still, like my uncle has this shrouded in mystery eggnog that's delicious, but, and it's, I, I, I know cocktails, so I kind of know it's in there. I kind of know it's not. I, I, I got an idea. Uh, and it's not a true eggnog, uh, maybe for sorts, but it's his eggnog. So, you know, find cocktails, find what you like, find what you don't like, and make it yours. And we're all over the board with, with what the favorites were. French 75, Copy Martina, uh, Marissa says, Espresso Martina, Leandra, um, French 75. Uh, Julie Rose says, Hot Toddy and the Irish Coffee. So... I think there's a lot of hits with okay, these. Great. So fantastic job, Ryan. I, I yeah. truly appreciate the time that you put in to uh, tonight's presentation um, and working with us. And I, where are you located? Uh, people are wondering where they can go visit you. Uh, so we are at uh, Paper Doll Bar, which is at 2320 First Avenue North. Uh, we are in the Loft District. Uh, if it Kind of makes sense. We're kind of somewhere between Kerrigan's and between uh, 23rd Street, uh, right on the first Avenue Main Drive. Gotcha. And if you can support them, it would be fantastic. And I know we're already making plans to to get out there to visit uh, Ryan and the crew at Paper Doll Bar again. Ryan, thank you so much for spending the last hour plus with us. Um, fantastic information great uh, cocktails, and we've really, really enjoyed having you tonight. Well, Greg, thank you so much for uh, reaching out to us. We were so happy to do this. Thank y'all, everyone who is in attendance. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this. Uh, it was a lot of fun doing this for everyone. Uh, a big thank you to all you, and of course, my assistant. Uh, thank you. Chris, <laughs> Chris and Green. Uh, thank y'all so much, and happy holidays, everyone. And happy holidays to you. Just a heads up to all of tonight's guests. This is Bowl Week, so a recording of the presentation will be available online, but give me a few minutes to get this done. I'm heading out to Shreveport for the bowl game to work that, so it may not be until Sunday, Monday that I actually get it out to you, but I will get all the information out to you, including the video, including the recipes, including all of the information that Ryan included on that document. Be sure to join us for other upcoming webinars. On Thursday, January 6th, Dr. Courtney Peterson will join us for intermittent fasting. Should I really eat breakfast? And maybe we're going to have one of these cocktails with us as well. <laughs> Dr. Peterson will explore this topic and let us know if that really helps us lose weight and improve health. Then on Thursday, January 27th, we will welcome alumna Carol Gunnivan for your last phase of planning. Preparing for the end of life is never easy. Find out what you need to know to make sure you and your family is ready. And on Tuesday, April 12th, we will have Dr. Suzanne Judd with us for diet and brain health. This webinar will let us know what our diet should look like in order to protect and maintain our cognitive function. We're also looking at a health and comedy webinar coming up in May. So stay tuned for more details about that. Find out more about all of our events and register for them at alumni.uab.edu events. 
Well, whether you're in your office or traveling, download our UAB Green and Told podcast, especially during the holidays, you're to and from family and friends. Every other week, we sit down with members of the UAB community to share their stories. Our latest one is Adam Aldrich from Airship. The next one is going to be Joy O'Neill from The Red Barn. All of our episodes can be on Spotify and the Apple Podcast app or visit us at alumni.uab.edu slash green and told. And stay on top of everything alumni on social media. Search UAB alumni on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also look us up on LinkedIn by searching UAB alumni career community. And if you need to contact us, it's easy. We made it real easy for you. Alumni at uab.edu or just visit our website alumni.uab.edu. So once again, thank you so much for joining us for tonight's Holiday Mixology 101 webinar with Ryan Abrams of Paper Doll Bar. Have a great evening, everybody. And as always, go Blazers.